Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 33 and 34. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 33 and 34. The title of the message is Christians' Shame. Christians' Shame. Christians' Shame. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 33 and 34. The Bible says, Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Father Nathan, can you please pray for the message? Father Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for everything you've given us. I just pray, Lord, that you just speak to us, Lord, through this message, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would just convict our hearts, Lord, and really come put in our mind that one day you're going to be coming back. And I pray that whatsoever we do, we can come before you and say, Lord, is this something that's really profitable, something that's honorable to you? And Lord, I pray that you speak to us, Lord. I pray that you be with there with the preacher. I pray that you fill him with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Soften our hearts, Lord. Open up our ears. I pray that we walk out of here being a doer of your word and not just a hearer. Thank you, Lord, for letting us gather together safely, Lord. I pray all this in Christ Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Christians' shame. Where shame is very difficult. Shameful person is not something that you want to hear. You hear it all the time in many cultures. Don't be ashamed to our family. You can do anything, but don't bring shame to our family. Being a Christian who is a shameful Christian brings shame to the Lord Jesus Christ. And many times, Christians don't realize that you bring shame to the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 34, Apostle Paul says, I speak this to your shame. Why? What's happening here? Because of verse 33, be not deceived, evil communications corrupt good manners. Because of who you hang around with, because who you associate with, evil communications come and corrupts good manners. And when we talk about this good manners, this manner is not about being polite, you know, not being nice to people, opening the door, you know, when elders are coming, you know, showing your respect. No. This manner is about all conduct in your life, right. every conduct. You know, when you think about conduct, everything, you know, how you talk, you know, how you behave yourself, how you present yourself, all this can be corrupted by what? Evil communication. Christians, when you are at places that you're not supposed to be, it's going to make you dirty. Can you imagine if you're that person who's at a place that you're not supposed to be, who's hanging out with a people, bunch of people that you're not supposed to be, what's going to happen? It's going to corrupt you. And especially when you look at it in a spiritual sense, you're going to be polluted. You bring that virus, you bring that germ to people, to other Christians. Dr. Ruckman said it this way, I make it a habit in my own personal life, and I don't know whether you will or not, or whether you should or not, to cut off communications with every Christian. And he's not talking about outside worldly people. He's talking about Christians. Every Christian, to cut off communication with every Christian who in any way tends to drag me away from the Word of God or prayer or witnessing or preaching the truth. And then that's, you know, Dr. Ruckman. I don't know about you. I mean, that's a strong statement. Who's around you here? Other Christians. If there are going to be people around here that kill your zeal for the Lord? I mean, Dr. Rockwell will be like, you know what? I'm done. I cut up my communication with you. 
I mean, that's a strong statement. I mean, that's him saying when the time, at the time that he said this, that was 53 years into his ministry. So he knows what he's talking about. I mean, that 53 years is, you know, older than the majority of the people here. So he learned something in his ministry that not just unsaved people, that's just given, but there are many saved people because they hang around with the wrong crowd, they corrupt other believers. I don't know if that's you today. I mean, the Bible says, Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion has light with darkness? 2 Corinthians 6.14. Then when you look in your life, I mean, who do you associate most with? Within last week, or even, you know, within last month, where have you gone to? Have you been at places that you weren't supposed to be? I mean, as a Christian, you ought to know better. Do you know why Apostle Paul says, I speak this to your shame? Because this is especially in regards to witnessing. Many people don't get saved because of you, Christians. Because of where you are. Because of how you behave. Because you've been corrupted by evil communication. It's very easy to be Corrupt it. Do you know why some of you guys cuss so much as a Christian? Because you watch, you practice. You watch, you practice. I mean, as a Christian, F words shouldn't come out of your mouth in whatever language it is. We have Spanish-speaking people. We have Chinese-speaking people, Vietnamese-speaking people, Korean-speaking people. And whatever other language that's spoken here, you should not be cussing. I mean, that's coming out of your temple. Why is it that when you're outside of church, you can't cuss? Is your temple of God only, at, only a temple of God at church? Everywhere, anytime, it's your temple. Then... It just tells me that you are with a bunch of people who corrupt you, evil communications. If you're by yourself and if you're with people that who does not cuss, you're not going to cuss. Because I seen, you know, high school kids, junior high kids, you know, I was playing some basketball at a park. Every other word is F word. I mean, every other word. I mean, they have no shame. And then, you know, some of them are supposed to be Christians, right? They came out of a Christian church to play. And every word that's coming out is F word or any other bad word. And it was Korean kids, too, so they're using a lot of Korean bad words, too. You know, Korean language is funny in a way because you can't create a lot of bad words. You know, like English, you know, you just have set bad words here and there. Koreans, you just mix and match, and then they just create different words. You know, I don't know about other languages out there. What kind of testimony is it? Because it says all conduct, all conduct, you know, which means your speech as well. Then if you see a so-called Christian cussing all the time, why would I want to be a Christian? As a human being, you're not trained to be someone who loves cuss or bad words coming out of people's mouth. Do you marry people? Do you want to call each other bad words all the time? Do you want to call each other B word every time you look at your wife or your husband? You want to use the F word every time you see your husband? Your wife? I mean, those are just wicked, you know, people out there who's gone way out there. But normal folks, they don't talk like that. And we're talking about unsaved people here. But why is it that Christians 
so-called Bible believers have such a dirty mouth, foul mouth, and worse than a dung mouth. You know, it should feel like if you say any kind of cuss words out of your mouth, you should feel very dirty. It's almost like you know, I jumped into a pool of you know, porty potties and then you know, stay myself just like that. But what happens though when you talk like that? Everybody around can start smell. Man, it stinks, right? If I jumped into a porty party and I came out and walked through that door, I'm sure, you know, Sister Linda's gonna smell like, you know, many feet away. Or the Oscar's gonna know. He doesn't have too many emotions, at least not that I know of, but he would show big time emotion at that point, <laughs> right? Then if you know it's stinky, it's polluted, and it's shame, why do you do it? You gotta stop. I mean, a lot of people just talk about verse 33. You know, of course, be not deceived. You have a communication cut up good manners. Okay, so I'm not going to go places that I don't want to go to. But why is that there? Because of 34, awake to righteousness and sin not, because you keep on sinning. As Christians, you continue to sin and sin and sin. Why? Because of your evil communication. Who are you talking to? And who do you talk to? You have to understand this. I'm not here to tell you to cut off every relationship out there. That's unsafe people. That's impossible. And you shouldn't. You want to be a good testimony to others so that they can get saved. But however, if your best friend, the person that you rely most, the person that you talk to about your deepest desires and everything else is a non-Christian, one day, they're going to come back in and bite you in the behind. It's going to happen. They have a different spirit. Simple as that. Who's going to control them? Who's their father? Their father is the devil. And he's father of lies. I got burned before. I'm telling you from personal experience. You don't get too close to folks that are not saved. As a Christian, I mean, you could hate me or whatnot, but that's the Bible way, biblical way. Why? Evil communications will eventually corrupt good matters. It will eventually corrupt you. Right. I'm like, okay, you know what? I have to be nice to that person. Good. I have to be close to that person. I have to hang out with that person, you know, to lead him to the Christ. At what point do you say close is too close? Right. You always have to keep a distance. Do you know why some of you can never get out of this, how should I say, confusing state as a Christian when it comes to doctrine? Because you're always mixed up with evil communication. Yeah. Right? Well, you know, I know Dr. Jin Kim is good. But you know what? I'm going to listen to people who criticize him. Okay, go ahead. Then, but don't bring that to our church. Yeah. I mean, if you're you know, against any of our church policies or our doctrine, don't come to our church. Go to a church that you agree with. Amen. Go to people who criticize me, who criticize Pastor Kim, who criticize you know, Dr. Jin Kim. Go to those churches and have fun over there. Because we don't need evil communications coming to our church and corrupt good matters, corrupt good Christians. You know, people especially starting new in their faith, new Christians. Right. You know, especially new Christians don't know anything. They're trying to get better as a Christian. And you bring in those junk inside of our church, you know, you're doing great damage to the body of Christ. Right. Just go with people who already damaged themselves. Watch every single critic of, you know, our channel. There's plenty. 
when someone does the truth, there's always going to be a lot of haters, whether you, you, know, you agree with it or not. Then go with them. Please, don't ever utter those words inside our church. Because if I hear about it, what am I going to do? I'm going to talk to you about it. I'm going to say, talk to the congregation as a whole and let you know we don't accept any compromise in our church. A lot of times people just hear what they say and they always take it out of context. Even communication is a lot about taking it out of context. Oh yeah, hey, come to this party. You don't have to drink. Just come to the party, right? Your presence is very important. And what do you know? You start drinking. Like, the pressure is too much. Hey, you know, it's just one glass of wine. And there isn't even a whole lot of wine. I mixed it with a lot of other stuff, non-alcoholic beverage, right? You know, just, just drink it. Ah, one beer is fine. You know, hey, 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 you know, it's, it's just a tiny bit of vodka or whiskey. You know, you could still drive. You're within the limits of, you know, DUI. Okay. And then what do you think's going to happen to you? You think you're that strong? You think you're so strong to the point where, you know, I could resist every single temptation? Why would God say in his word, abstain from all appearance of evil? Because he knows that you and I are weak. If it's presented right in front of you, eventually you're going to accept it. If you go through a, I mean, just for, not because of your work, because for the sake of going, so you're going to casino all the time. You know, casino, like these hotels, right? You're like, you know, I'm just going there just for fun. But I'm never going to gamble, right? Man, suddenly, you know, someone didn't use all of their coins, and there's some credits left on one of the machines. And your curiosity gets best of you. Ah, uh, you know, nothing harm's going to happen. I'm not wasting my money. And then, you know, you pull it once. Now you become slave of that machine and the whole casino. Don't kid yourself. Your flesh is strong. Your flesh is so strong that, you know, if you don't consider it dead, you know, nailed to the cross, it's going to continue to eat you alive. It's going to continue to make you sin. It's going to continue to make you be corrupt. Why do you, why do I, dislike politicians almost all the time because they're corrupt. They're always doing things that they're not supposed to when they say they'll do or they're not going to do. You as a Christian, you're like, you committed to the Lord, I'm going to try to live holy. I'm going to be separated unto you. And many of you guys made that commitment to the Lord. I mean, isn't that a promise? Is promise like nothing to you? I mean, when people get married till death do us apart, are you going to be like over 50% of the people who do not care about marriage and just say, you know what? I'm just going to get divorced. That promise means nothing to me. Today is new. Or do you have that kind of attitude as a Christian? Hopefully not. Then, if you make promise to the Lord, if you make commitment to the Lord, then you have to understand, if I do this, if I hang around with these people, it's going to bring shame. That becomes my shame as a Christian. How much shame do you have in your life? Yeah. Write it down, but don't share it with anybody, right? Keep it to yourself. I heard some stories where they have people who go around in group sessions where they tell each other about every sin that they do. And they're like, okay, that's how we become holy. That's what Catholics did. That's what Babylonian system did. 
trying to hear all of your sins so that they could use it against you. If you have a sin problem, go straight to the Lord and get it right with the Lord. That's why evil communications corrupt good manners. Because of evil communications, you don't witness. If you're not witnessing for the Lord, Bible has clear answer. You've been corrupted. Your manner is corrupted. Your conduct has been corrupted. You're hanging around with evil communication. And it's not just about physical contact. It's through the internet. You watch wicked stuff all the time. Don't kid to me, Christians. You watch pornography. You watch wicked stuff. You watch bad videos. You watch worldly entertainment. You do it. How do I know? Because people talk to me about it. Don't, don't try to avoid it and run away from it. It's time for you to actually make a decision. It's time for you to actually make a commitment. It's time for you to actually repent and get right with the Lord. Whatever you've been watching, wherever you've been going, wherever you've been listening to, you got to know that that's evil communication and that has corrupted you for all these years. Yeah, all these years since you got saved. I mean, if you've been saved for only a few months, hey, you know, it's been corrupting you for a few months. For many of you, you've been saved for years and years and years. Then that tells you and me that these evil communications have corrupted us continuously. And we let it continue to corrupt us. How long are you going to let it continue to corrupt you? When will you ever stop? The Lord gives us enough chances to get right. But when that cup is filled, it's going to be like, time's up. Then you have to pay for it. Because the Lord has to chastise his loving children. If you're saved, you're his child. And he's going to chastise you. If there's no witnessing in your life, then I could guarantee you're full of evil communication. When I don't have witnessing in my life, I could tell you, shamefully, that I have full of evil communication. But that's what the Bible says. The Bible is, Bible is perfect. You and I shouldn't compare ourselves to someone next to you, behind you, in front of you. You and I have to compare ourselves to Lord Jesus Christ and the Word of God. And the Word of God will cleanse us if we get right. If you don't get right, the Word of God will continuously condemn you and me. Because if you don't get right with the Lord, eventually you're condemning your own self. I mean, when Apostle Paul had to say, I speak this to your shame, what do you think he's been seeing? Uh, Corinthian church is very carnal church. Just like church right now. So many carnal churches out there. And don't ever think that you're special or better because you're in a Bible-believing church. Right. Only thing difference is that you know, we have the right doctrine. We have the King James Bible. But if you don't follow it, you're no better. That's why you and I, in the sight of God, are nothing. Right. You and I are nothing. You're not special. I'm not special. Right. That's why don't ever think that, oh, evil communication, and I could stay away from it. You can't. You have to first acknowledge that you gave yourself to evil communication all these years, and you've been corrupted many, many times and continuously, which has hindered you from witnessing like you should, and you have to get right with the Lord. The whole point is you have to get right with the Lord. I have to get right with the Lord. The whole point is that I've let myself associate or be in evil communication for too long. If you don't stop right now, I guarantee you'll never stop. I know your flesh. I know my flesh. Unless you cut it off, it'll continue to go. Continue, continue. It's like lizard's tail. You cut it off, it's gone for a little bit, and it grows again. And that's your evil communication. Because you don't cut it off completely, it continuously grows, continuously grows. 
That's why Dr. Ruckman had to say such a strong statement. He cut off communication with Christians that kill zeal for the Lord. Are you that Christian who kills zeal for the Lord for other Christians? Are you? Don't raise your hand right now, but ask yourself, am I that Christian who kills zeal for other Christians when serving the Lord? When it comes to word of God, when it comes to prayer, when it comes to witnessing, when it comes to preaching the truth. If you're that person, man, you better get right with the Lord right now. I mean, you have to. I mean, you're playing with fire. Man, the Lord's going to get you. I mean, sooner or later. If I'm that person, the Lord's going to get me sooner or later. That's why when you and I recognize that I'm nothing in the sight of God or less than nothing, and I need to completely immerse with the Word of God and follow every word in the Word of God, you and I will never change. You could come to street preaching every weekend. You could do visitation. You could come to church and sit, you know, every Sunday, Wednesday, unless your heart changes, unless your heart realizes it, you'll never, ever completely change. God will give you grace because you're still doing some of his work. You know, enough grace. But he's not going to let it go. He's not going to allow it. Don't abuse God's grace and mercy. Be thankful that God has given you grace and mercy. Be thankful that, you know what, because of the word of God, I realized how such a terrible state that I've been in all this time, now i got to get it right. It's my shame that I haven't been a good witness. It's my shame that I've been, you know, constantly being touched with evil communication. It's my shame that I didn't even recognize that as my shame. Now, once you know your problem, once you accept it, once you truly, truly from your heart have willingness to change, then the Lord's going to help you. Don't ask the Lord to help you without having willingness to change. Right. You know, so, many, so many times Christians go, you know what, Lord? I'm, oh, man, I have this problem with people I hang around with, with things that I see on the Internet, you know, things that I deal with. You know, those evil communications constantly corrupt me. Lord, help me. Yes. Same night, right after the prayer, oh. you go to the places you shouldn't. You see things that you shouldn't. You practice things that you shouldn't. How in the world the Lord's going to help you when your heart's not there? I mean, if I want to teach you calculus, you're like, I never want to learn calculus. I could teach you for hours. You're like, oh, blah, 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 blah. And then you, it's time for you to do a, you know, solve a, one of the questions. You're like, oh, I don't know. Haven't you been taught for 10 hours? I didn't care. So you've been hearing these type of messages for all your life after you got saved if you're in a Bible-believing church. You're not going to change? I don't know. I mean, you're going to kill zeal for the Lord? You're going to kill my zeal for the Lord? I mean, it's up to me. It's for each person. Time to cut off communication with you. Amen. Don't be sad. You brought it on yourself. If you cut off communication with me because I kill your zeal for the Lord... Hey, it's my fault. Yes. Then you have to realize this. With my life, do people want to learn more Word of God, listen to more Word of God, read the Word of God, Preach. study the Word of God? Because of my conduct, do people want to pray more? Because of my conduct, do people want to witness more? Because of my conduct, do people want to preach the truth more? If you can answer yes to all of that question, then evil communications lies in your life. Then you have to get right with the Lord. Amen. If there's no evil communication, right, then you're not going to kill anybody's zeal in serving the Lord. Instead, you're going to help them. You're going to encourage them. You're going to admonish them. That's why when you run around with wrong crowd, when you watch wrong things, when you hear wrong things constantly, what's going to happen? It's going to lead you to sin, right? Apostasy, and then 
eventually punishment. And then you're going to take other people down with you. And I think that's the saddest part. We, we had people, I, I think I mentioned in last week's preaching or a week before, being of our ministry, you know, a person who was doing most for the church, you know, rebelled, you know, corrupted, and he left, but 30 other people left too eventually. And where's their faith right now? I mean, I hear things. They have no faith now. They have nowhere to go. And then they just practice their own and they think they're all good. No. They are regretting it for the rest of their life right now. I mean, what do you think is going to happen to you if you continue to associate yourself with evil communications? It's going to corrupt you. It's going to corrupt people around you. And eventually, God forbid, but you're going to rebel against the truth and you're going to leave. That's the conclusion and that's the steps. What's going to happen? And that's happened in the history. It's going to happen again in the future. Yes. You don't want to be that person, though. Amen. It makes no sense that after you hear, and I'm preaching to myself as well, after I hear these things, why would I mean, why do I have to go on the path of destruction right. when I know it's path of destruction? You know, I got to turn around Amen. and go to the right path. Yes. And if you have that opportunity, then you have to take it. But most important thing is you shouldn't wait. Don't wait until next week. Oh, you know what? I have more evil communications to do. I have to cuss more. I got to let everything out today. That's a dumb thing, right? You stop right now. Amen. I have to meet this person. Unless you're witnessing to that person, right. but for whatever other reason, forget it, yeah, right? <laughs> forget about your phone or your computer or internet, you know. Yes. I'm just not, I'm going to just block that site. Amen. I'm never going to watch those things again. Yes. I'm never going to let those things pop up again, right? You know, don't play dumb. You know, everybody knows that there's ways to block those things ways to not, you know, get involved with those things. Because many Christians, they're different from outside. You look like a holy person here. You're the biggest devil outside of church. Amen. Simple as that. You could act all holy here, outside of church. You're sinful. You're lustful. Yes. You just commit sin after sin and bring shame to you and shame to Lord Jesus Christ. It's time for you to wake up. I mean, when will you ever wake up if you don't wake up right now? Evil communications corrupt good manners. Proverbs 13, 20 says, A company of fools shall be destroyed. You will be destroyed. That's what the Word of God says. I will be destroyed. That's what the Word of God says. Then you have two choices. I could heed. I could repent. You could heed. You could repent, get right with the Lord, and stop bringing shame to the Lord's name. Stop being shameful Christians. Or because we have free will, unlike those Truly believers, we have free will, you can destroy yourself. The choice is yours. Let's pray.